Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Rubix1138, and I welcome you to the Thinkus Canary uh, workshop. Uh, if you have not already uh, joined us in the Discord chat, please go to blueteamvillage.org and uh, click on DEF CON 28 and join us in, in the Discord. The text chat while we uh, go through this presentation will be in the text workshops track one under Flamingo Hotel. Just scroll all the way down, go to text workshops track one, uh, and you can post your questions there. I'd like to uh, welcome Adrian and Bradley from Thinks. Go ahead, guys, take it away. Thank you. Hello, and thank you very much for that. That was a kind intro. And we are very excited to be here. And we're going to talk a little bit about how um, canaries and canary tokens uh, are, are now going to be integrated into OpenSock and uh, give you a little bit of context and background on them so you can understand how to use them uh, when going through OpenSock. Uh, so again, big big thanks to OpenSock. Uh, really excited to be part of it, and uh, really glad that um, you know they they thought to include us in this. All right, so what we're going to do first is just go through some slides real quick. Here, we'll go through some live demos as well. Um, a lot of what you're going to see is uh, is kind of a mix of the the commercial product and the and the free product. Really, the free stuff we have out there work the same way, uh, same principles, uh, same uh, data you get in the alerts. Um, just for convenience and, and time's sake, uh, you know, you, you might see a little bit of the, the commercial product here. So some of our goals uh, when we designed Canary and Canary tokens was, you know, a tool that gets deployed and gets used is useful. So a lot of work went into making them super easy and uh, simple to use. Uh, they take minutes to set up and deploy. So a lot of work goes into making them uh, super easy to, to do that. And uh, little to no maintenance, you know, so again, you know, for a tool to be useful, uh, it has to function, you know, so any kind of maintenance, you know, we try and make, uh, um, non-existent or, you know, we, we can do it automatically for you in the background. Even a free tool, um, most of that you can just uh, generate Canary tokens, deploy them, forget them, uh, deploy Open Canary, and, and pretty much forget about it until it sends you alerts. Um, so, yeah, and those alerts, uh, that's a big goal also is, you know, how can we get this as close to zero false positives as possible? And uh, ultimately, you know, it's it, – the goal here is to know when it matters, to know when an attacker's in your environment uh, as soon as possible when it matters to know that. All right, so as I mentioned, um, our open source uh, and, and free products here, Open Canary uh, is available. It's well documented. Uh, you can grab it from GitHub. Um, I think the Docker container has been uh, downloaded uh, tens of thousands of time, so we, we know it's it's getting a lot of use out there. Um, you know the package has been installed, and the uh, you can run your own Canary Token server uh, as well with, with a Docker container, or you can use CanaryTokens.org. Uh, I think we have over a hundred thousand people using CanaryTokens.org. You don't even need to create an account to use it. You can just go there right now and start creating tokens and uh, distributing them throughout your personal devices. Uh, you know, your your production environment, wherever you want to use them. People use them all over. All right, so talking about the context a little bit here, what are these and why would you use them in a blue team environment or uh, open sock? So the goal here is to let you know as soon as the attacker gets in the environment. So, you know, over the last couple of decades, dwell time is really long, attackers are in environments way too long, and they just, they go on undetected. And um, and that's a problem we set out to solve here is, you know, what if we could get that dwell time down to minutes to when you at least know that uh, there's something suspicious going on inside the environment. So that's the goal here, is um, the attacker's already in the environment and doing suspicious things, and, and that's what we alert on. So that's important context to understand. 
And how do we do that? So I've got a quick diagram here just to show you uh, simply what we leverage to make our, our, our product work here, to make it win. And when an attacker gets in, they don't know where anything is in your environment. They don't, you know, unless they land on a Visio diagram, on a highly detailed Visio diagram, the moment they get in, they're going to have to explore the network. They're going to have to look around for what they're, uh, what they're hoping to find. <clears throat> And if you drop in these, these canaries, which are honeypots, which can look like anything else in your network, uh, anything from Windows Server 2016 to uh, a Linux server, uh, you know, the idea is it looks like a normal server, but there's no, uh, there's no real reason anybody should be touching it or using it. So the attacker comes in, does that same exploration, and they start setting off alerts. And furthermore, when you take canary tokens, uh, you can set traps throughout even more of the environment. You can make it even more uh, tricky and difficult for the attacker to explore around the network without setting off uh, even more of these alerts. So really what the attacker is doing when you've deployed these traps around in your network is they're, they're painting a roadmap for you. They're painting a picture for where they're going, what they're doing, uh, even their motivations. You know, what, what servers are they targeting? Uh, when they open up uh, some of these token files, what are the file names that are getting them to double click that? Uh, you know, are they files that look like they have employee data, files that look like they have customer data, files that look like they just have more passwords so that they can pivot further into the environment? Um, you know, a lot of strategies you can use when deploying both the canaries and the tokens here uh, to understand what the attacker is doing, where they're going in your environment. And, uh, and paint you a nice picture of what's going on. And of course, uh, when those alarms do get set off, we wanna make sure they go where you can get to them. Uh, in the context of OpenSOC, this is gonna be gray log. That's where you're gonna see uh, any canary token alerts or any uh, canary alerts. Uh, of course, you know we, we can send them tons of other places, but that's, that's where you're gonna see them for, for OpenSOC. And, and we'll take a closer look at the kind of details that you're going to get in those alerts. So where does Canary sit on the network and let you know uh, when suspicious stuff is going on on your network? Uh, canary tokens uh, can do it at a smaller level. You know, so Canary tokens can be a bit of code, can be a file, uh, and, and highly complementary to the Canaries. You can even have Canary tokens on Canaries or Canary tokens within Canary tokens, which sit on another place that is triggered by Canary tokens. You can layer these uh, really deep so that even if one or two aren't maybe triggered, you know, something is gonna trigger if you deploy enough, enough, enough of these in your environment. And understand how these work and how you would use them or how you might see them used within uh, OpenSOC. We're gonna take a look at probably one of the most common and popular uh, canary tokens that get used, which is just the, uh, the word doc canary token. So in this scenario here, um, whoever's creating this canary token, you know, our, our, our canary user creates a word canary token, and this token can look like a real word file. You can even upload an existing word file. You can copy, um, any kind of contents you want in it. Um, make it look as realistic as you want. And you're gonna name it something the attacker wants. So really thinking about this, you're fishing the attacker. You're using the same principles attackers use uh, against us, against them. You know, you're trying to trick them into opening a file, into taking an action that's gonna trigger a, a, one of these tripwires, that's gonna trigger some of these alerts and let you know what the attacker's up to. So after they grab that, you know, maybe the, they send it off to someone else, you know, they're going to sell the data. Um, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Anybody that opens this, uh, this Word document, this token Word document, is going to set off an alert as soon as it's opened. You know, before you've even seen the contents of that file, it could be blank. You know, it doesn't matter how clever the file is, how cleverly you've made the ruse. You could have just been lazy and left it completely blank. And by the time the attacker knows that, it's already sent off an alert with some of their data attached to that. And the 
uh, Canary Admin gets the alert and sees the details of who opened it, where they opened it, um, and uh, and you know what's going on. You know that that file has left that secure environment wherever you stored that file. All right, so what can these alerts tell you? And at this point, we're gonna jump into an interactive demo here. I'm going to leave the slides behind. All right. See how big we can make this without it going off the screen here. <clears throat> All right, so this is my console here. I've got two canaries running. Uh, one looks like a Cisco and one is set up as a Synology NAS. And then I've got my command line here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this to run some uh, NMAP scans against these hosts here, just so you can see what it looks like when one of these alerts does go off. So I'm gonna copy this IP address, do a quick scan against it. Hopefully that's big enough to see there, make that larger. All right, so the attacker sees this, they see what they would expect to see on a Cisco router, on maybe an older Cisco router, it's still got Telnet open, uh, MAC address is Cisco, uh, the operating system looks like Cisco, looks like a Cisco 1920 router. And as you probably noticed there, as I ran that scan, we got a few alerts. So, you know, first, first thing, we know when somebody scans a canary. If you have port scan detection enabled, you're gonna get alerts when you get scanned. And we can even tell that uh, it was an NMAP scan. You know, the OS uh, flag in NMAP is, is pretty easy to detect. Uh, nothing else really looks like it. So, so we know when we've been, uh, somebody's doing some OS fingerprinting with, with NMAP specifically. So maybe the attacker tries to log into SSH. You know, they saw SSH was open here. Maybe they're hoping for some default credentials. <clears throat> And just like SSH, you know, they try three times, you know, it doesn't work. Uh, there is no correct username or password that's gonna get you into a canary. Uh, they just exist, all these services exist there for the attacker to spin their wheels, waste their time trying to get in. They could try to get in through the web config there, which is just basic auth, nothing fancy here. But they could, it could throw a brute force, uh, you know, a dictionary attack against it. All they're gonna do is generate more and more alerts for you to see what they're doing. So already we have this picture here. You know, they, they painted this story of what they're trying to do. You know, they've scanned the network. Uh, they found something interesting. They tried to log into it. Uh, that didn't work. And they tried to log in a different way. That didn't work. And, uh, you know, you, you can see what this attacker is trying to do. And the main thing you're gonna use uh, to pivot off of when you see an alert from one of these canaries is probably gonna be the source IP. So some of these details can help you as well. You can see the username and password that, was, that they tried. Uh, you can even see the uh, remote SSH version that might tell you something about the host that they're trying to get in from. Um, you know, so some of these details might help you, uh, but this IP address and the reverse DNS uh, these are going to be the main things uh, that you're probably going to pivot off of uh, looking through Greylog, looking through Moloch, uh, some of these other tools. Uh, that, that's going to point you in the right direction. And then, you know, the rest of the tools that you saw today, uh, if you watch any of those presentations, uh, those are going to uh, help you build that investigation and figure out what's going on. Uh, when they do hit a web server on the Canary, um, browsers are nice enough to hand off the user agent. That tells you a little bit more about the attacker. You know, in this case, obviously, I'm using a Mac, and uh, that's revealed through it. Of course, an attacker could, you know, they can change their user agent. Uh, you know, they could even mask their IP address. Um, but generally, uh, you'd be able to tell if that's happening as well. You know, there's other ways of, of telling that. All right, so that's that's what that looks like. Um, just doing a scan and, and trying to log into a few things on the um, 
on the Cisco honeypot there. And this one, the Synology NAS, uh, is also fairly interesting. We're going to do a quick scan of this one. Uh, it looks a little bit different. Uh, one of the key things that's different about it is it has a file share. So we're going to run a quick scan against it. Again, our results come back pretty quickly here. Uh, MAC address Synology uh, services look like what you'd expect of um, a, uh, a file share, a, a network storage device. Uh, they do run Linux, you know, and that's what it comes back as. So, you know, maybe the attacker, any attacker that sees an open file share, you got to know what's on that file share, right? So we're going to pop in there and take a look. <clears throat> and by default, we're going to make it pretty easy for them to get on there. You know, you, you could lock it down, make them use some stolen credentials to get in there. Um, but we really want to know what they're interested in. So we're going to make it easy. You know, so with a guest login, they can get on there. They can see the different files on there, you know, and, and this is where it gets interesting. If you've got files that look like they have different types of data, uh, you know, depending on what they go after, you know, maybe in this case, they're going to go after the router config. You know, they're still hung up on that Cisco router. They really want to get in there. They want to check out this config, see how it's configured. Bummer, looks like the, the file is password protected. Uh, that's as far as I go with that. Maybe they try and open a few others here. Uh, but you get to see which files they're interested in, which files they go after. So we, we see here in the alert, they went right after that Cisco router config. And again, by now, you know, this has painted a, a pretty nice picture. You know, we know who the attacker is. Uh, we know they're they're scanning the network, and we know they're trying to get into things. So pretty clear picture of what's going on. And that's, that's really the goal of the product here is, is to uh, paint a clear picture that, you know, that, yes, this is probably a ma malicious attack, and we need to investigate it. That, that early breach detection. So now you're going you're gonna to take that, you're going to pivot to other tools, and you're going to start to dive deeper. So I'm going to clean up these alerts real quick here. And we will talk a bit about Canary tokens. So like I mentioned before, uh, where Canaries let you know when suspicious stuff is going on in the network, as we saw with scans, login attempts there, uh, Canary tokens, uh, you can go even deeper. You can complement that. Uh, some of those files in that file share I just showed you could have been token files. And what that means, so in the case of, of the, the Word doc here, <clears throat> And as I mentioned before, you can even upload your own Word doc. So you know, I can take my, my fake pen test results here. I can just, uh, I need to give it a, a memo. So one of the key things here is you really want to use one token per location. So, you know, maybe, maybe I'm going to put this on my secret flash drive. I don't know why it's secret. It's just a flash drive. I only have one flash drive. Let's say that. So I'm going to put that there. I'm not going to put it in my email. I'm not going to put it on my desktop. Um, it's only going to exist on that flash drive. So if I see any alert from this Canary token, I know somebody's got my flash drive. <clears throat> Simple as that, because that's the only way somebody could have found this token. So we download that. And remember, this was an existing Word doc that I had. Um, you know, I haven't uh, even done anything special to this. Uh, it's just a, a normal Word doc that you can grab, you can upload, and we've just added a, a token to it. Um, so the attacker opens it up. There's no indication that this uh, Canary token has sent out anything. Um, there's no indication that uh, the attacker's fallen into a trap here. But in fact, it has sent out uh, several alerts. It's uh, the, our Word doc canary tokens have uh, what we call our, our DNS primitive, our DNS tokens embedded within it, and our web tokens embedded within it. And part of the reason we do that is because it doubles our chance of getting the alert out. On some networks, maybe uh, HTTP port 80 isn't allowed outbound. You know, only HTTPS uh, is allowed outbound. So this wouldn't have gotten back to the console. Um, 
But as long as the person that opened that Word file had working DNS, we would still get that back. You know, so we, we, we've got a really good chance of knowing when somebody opens one of these Word docs. And you can see we get a, a you know, the user agent here doesn't give as many details, but we, we can see what version of Office they've got. But the key information here is somebody would have had to have physical access to my flash drive for this uh, alert to trigger. And they were interested in this file out of all the files that were on my flash drive. This is, uh, you know, the first token file that they opened. Let's say I had multiple token files on there with, uh, you know, different file names suggesting they have different types of data in them. And they went after this one first. So that's useful to me also. Uh, and then I've got the, you know, both the, the DNS server that handed off that DNS uh, token that triggered. And then the um, the web token got out as well. So, you know, that that's my actual IP address uh, that's assigned to me by my ISP. That's what the web server sees when this Word document opens and it reaches back to the uh, Canary token server that lives on the console here. So a couple, couple useful pieces of information there that I can, I can leverage. Um, so yeah, that's the Word doc Canary token. Um, we do have, uh, as, you, as you can see here, there, there's different tokens for all sorts of different purposes. And uh, th this is pretty similar to what canarytokens.org uh, shows. I think we have almost every single uh, one of these tokens there as well. Uh, the other one I'm gonna show you here is the QR code token. Uh, and this is a fun one because it's very versatile. There's a lot of ways that we see QR codes used uh, in technology today. So setting up uh, your multi-factor authentication, uh, setting up um, you know, access to a secure messaging app, um, enrollment you know, maybe into your MDM, EMM uh, product. Uh, you, know, you, you see them out and about in, in physical places all the time. You know, scan here for more information about uh, this house that's for sale, that kind of thing. So, sky's the limit for how you can use these. You can use them digitally or you can use them in physical environments. So <clears throat> let's say I wanna know if somebody gets into Adrian's lunchbox. You know, I, I don't wanna know if somebody's just touched my lunchbox. I wanna know if they've actually opened it. <clears throat> because I've stuck this QR code on the inside of my lunchbox. I've printed this out, stuck it in there, um, you know, maybe put some text around it, like a uh, recipe for Adrian's, uh, you know, Adrian's secret recipe, you know, handed down through, through the generation, some, something to that, uh, that, that respect, you know, something somebody would be really interested in, in scanning. So I put this QR code there. If I ever get an alert on this, I know somebody has not only touched my lunchbox, but they've opened it up they spotted the QR code on the inside, they read the words around it, and they chose to scan it with their phone. You know, that's the only way I would get that trigger. So that's that's the power there. And uh, we've seen people put these in all kinds of locations. Um, I think one of my favorites is somebody told me that the, uh, they print this out on a sheet of paper, they put the words Microsoft Authenticator Recovery uh, around it, and they just leave that sheet of paper on their desk at work and just wait. And uh, <laughs> that's great. Four, tra four people are checking out my lunchbox. They want to see that secret recipe. I know this one is me. You know, we first of all, we just saw that source IP. Everybody knows this is me by now. Uh, we'll actually do a GOIP look up here, um, get some details there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can even see what kind of phone I'm using here. You know, we you get different uh, details out of these user agents depending on on how they're scanned, what devices scan them. Um, you know, so maybe there's some crazy situation where that those kinds of details are useful. But um, you know, the key point here again is I've only put this token one place. You know, it took me 30 seconds to do it to scan it out, uh, tape it to the inside of my lunchbox, um, but I can just leave it there forever. And if I ever get a trigger off of that, I know that somebody has been in that lunchbox. And maybe that lunchbox is, maybe it's not a lunchbox. Maybe it's a data center. Maybe it's a network closet. Maybe it, it's underneath the battery on a laptop. You know, all kinds of different places that you could hide these. Looks like we've got somebody from Oklahoma 
that scanned it. And again, you know, if you're coming through a VPN or something like that, that would be reflected here. Uh, but we've got uh, an Android uh, Pixel 3 XL. Um, <clears throat> we've got uh, Mission Viejo, somebody coming from California. And uh, a lot of these user agents will um, refer to the application used uh, to open it. Like I think that previous one we looked at, uh, ZXING, that's a barcode scanner app. And then one more here, uh, that would be Bradley. Uh, Bradley's in uh, up very early in the morning in South Africa and scanned it with his iPhone. So hope that helps to, to demonstrate the, the power of how you can use these tokens um, and, and how the canaries are used. And, and most importantly, when you see alerts from these, understanding what the attacker had to do to trigger those alerts and what it tells you about the attacker, where they are, and, and maybe even their, their motivations and, and where they're going to go next. And help you pivot between uh, some of the different applications here. So really, that's... Um, that's it in a nutshell. I think we still have 20 minutes. If there's any questions, we could absolutely take some of those. Bradley, I appreciate it. This was a great, uh, great presentation. I did mark down a couple of questions that were asked uh, during the presentation. Uh, does, Car does Canary token create, uh, or does the Canary token created uh, based off of the session plus protocol plus application, is it that uh, uniquely identified? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, based off the, so it, it might help to talk about the primitives a bit more. That that might answer the question if I talk about the web and DNS tokens that are, are kind of uh, sit behind this. Yeah, I think that would be um, the way to go, Adrian, is, is to look at how the tech token is being created because I think the question is related to whether it's being tripped by the uh, protocol or the application. Okay. Yeah, so first one I'm gonna create here is a web token. And I'm gonna create a fake email in my inbox that makes it looks like uh, if an attacker gets in my inbox, maybe they get all my passwords. They get access to my LastPass instance or something like that. So I can take this web token and I'm going to create a link in this email, that this fake email that I put in my inbox, and I, I'm going to basically uh, fish, you know, or, or social engineer the attacker into clicking it. And so what we're actually calling a token is this bit right here. This is the actual token that the web server is looking for. And this address here, and if you're using uh, canarytokens.org, you know, it would be something based on that. You can run your own canary token server, use it on your own domain. Um, you know, run, run your own right. Docker uh, Canary Token server. So this could be anything you want. This could also be anything you want. You know, we could name that admin files. We could name this um, password.db. And that's still going to trigger an alert when we go to that. So at its base component, and when we just demonstrated the QR code token, that's just using an embedded web token. So super simple way of doing it um, by reaching out, touching a web server uh, with this token here, we know to map that back to Adrian's inbox. We know that that's the token associated uh, with this memo, with this reminder that I set for myself. <clears throat> so I hope that I hope that answers the question of, of how that uh, how the token itself works. And um, and that's the same token that we have embedded in a, in a lot of these other ones. So the the word file has a web token embedded in it. Um, you know, I mentioned the QR code does. You know, and several of these others do. Uh, the other what we call our token primitive is DNS. So again, there's ways to get. Um, you know, if somebody gets in my inbox, we can we can uh, get a, a DNS uh, name to resolve. So if I were to just copy this DNS name, and again here, this bit is the token. Uh, you can tell uh, kind of from the length of it. And really it's a C name on the front of this uh, domain, uh, you know, that maps back to us. So if I do an NS lookup on that, I get an alert. So wherever I'm, I've 
that DNS address. If anyone resolves it, if it gets resolved for any reason, maybe I'm just sending it in clear text on the network. Somebody captures that traffic with Wireshark and they view that traffic and they tell Wireshark to resolve all the DNS addresses. That would trigger it. You know, something as simple as that. But if if I can find um, files, uh, you know, any any kind of tricks, any kind of ways to get a DNS address resolved, that that can trigger a token and send me an alert. Yeah, just to add on to uh, what Adrian mentioned is that we embedding uh, HTTP request and a DNS request inside of an, uh, a document, and we relying on uh, when the document gets opened with MS Word, for instance. MS Word uh, reaches out uh, with those uh, to those URLs at the DNS. So it's MS Word, the application itself, that's looking up those requests that are embedded into the, the document, and that's what's triggering the alert. Yeah, and that's important to note. You know, some of these require action from the attacker, like um, in my example of the fake email in my inbox. I've got to get, I've got to convince them to click that link. Uh, in other cases, like Bradley's example with the the Word doc, uh, simply opening it um, is all they need to do. You know, they they don't see it; it happens in the background. They don't even know uh, that those alerts have been triggered, and there's nothing else that they need to do. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Bradley. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, this has been a great presentation. And uh, so this uh, concludes the uh, presentation for uh, the uh, workshop for or Canary and, and, and Chris. In any case, uh, if you have any follow-up questions, um, the, uh, the speakers will be around in the Discord for a few minutes. And uh, again, the Discord that we are chatting in is the text-workshops-track1 in the Flamingo Health a hotel group uh, to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and so if you guys consider uh, come down, I think there's a couple of questions. If you've got some, some follow up, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, I appreciate sure. everybody listening in today and thank you very much for attending.